Ugh, Razor, why would you give a fuck about gaming journalism? After all, all entertainment media is corrupt. Just listen to Stephen Colbert. What about the accusations of collusion between designers, feminists, and journalists? Do you understand how important it is? We are talking about ethics in gamer journalism. Do you understand how huge that is? Um, I mean, what, what if there was no ethics in Hollywood journalism? What would, what would, if we can't trust Entertainment Tonight or TMZ, where would we be? Is that what you want for gamer journalism? Let's do this. Yes, you're absolutely right. Everyone is corrupt, particularly in media. You don't have to tell me. My ass is carved from fucking Jade. But as anyone who's logged enough frequent liar miles on IGN can attest, there's a very real difference between a light smattering of human fallibility and an unremitting downpour of lies so impenetrably black Kim Kardashian is currently fucking them. Fortunately, Stephen Colbert's idiocy is demonstrable, and not merely by watching five adjacent seconds of the decade-long protracted one-note Fox News joke that was his uniquely unfunny program program on Comedy Central. I said from the outset of the downfall of gaming journalism series, the core malady here is wound around the figurative aorta of the fucking industry. It's the revenue model. Game Informer, IGN, GameSpot, and all the rest as myself and now members of Gamergate have long alleged are far too cozy with video game publishers, particularly when the pool of said publishers has dwindled to such a meager fucking handful. In 1995, when major publishers were a dime a dance, journalists could easily justify taking the piss out of a given AAA wank extravaganza under the proviso that there was far more where Dyka Tana came from, but in 2015, when Activision accounts for easily one-fifth of your overall revenue base? Just how honest are you going to be on the subject of Call of Duty Ghost Recon Advanced Ops Warfare Part Quintillion? It's called consolidation. That's terror. I unequivocally argue that no other journalistic endeavor, from Entertainment Weekly to fucking Ranger Rick Magazine, procures a higher percentage of its revenue from the very subjects of its articles, as do video game websites and publications. Subjects it then gallingly purports to have a theoretic responsibility to cover with some semblance of objectivity. So, what you see before you here today is a very different episode. Not a rant, not a takedown, an experiment. And a simple one. If what Colbert and indeed untold titloads have had wits on Twitter have claimed is in fact accurate, and gaming journalism is just as, if not less, corrupt than other forms of entertainment journalism, then all that's really needed here is a principled application of mathematics. I hold in my hand three magazines. Top video game industry publication, Game Informer. Heavy Metal Music Entertainment Magazine, Terrorizer, and as a bit of a control, a consumer publication, Motor Trend, as a matter of context for how advertisements are actually handled outside of the entertainment business. The experiment is simplicity itself. Count the overall number of pages, overall number of ads, and herein lies the genital rub. Total number of ads paid for by the subjects of the articles. If Colbert and Sarkeesian aren't up to their Canadian pit stains and their own briny bullshit, the amount of video game advertisements in this issue of Game Informer should be roughly equivalent to the number of album advertisements in this issue of Terrorizer magazine. The problem? I've already conducted this experiment. See, the entire catalyst for this rant was a chance trip to the DMV of all places, which as we all know, manufactures just two things with anything approaching regularity. Driver's licenses for illegal immigrants and motherfucking wait times. Pencil in hand and pad within arm's reach, I took to counting and the results were as follows. Beginning with the control motor trend, a publication that at least in this issue, has roughly 117 pages, boasted just 17 pages of car advertisements, of 25 pages of ads overall, around one-seventh of the magazine devoted to car ads. Now remember, that's the control, a consumer publication. That should be the theoretical standard. The experiment continued. Terrorizer Magazine. 98 pages of balmy British bullshit devoted predominantly to the wall of to your immediate left as you enter Hot Topic. Hey, don't judge, I got it for free. Of the nearly 100 pages, 18 of them, or roughly one-fifth of the magazine, are devoted to album advertisements. A higher percentage than a consumer magazine like Motor Trend, but not by much. And now, the moment of truth. 
The subject of Downfall episode number nine, GameStop's own propaganda mill, none other than Game Informer. For a magazine with this much hot air, it sure is a fat bastard. Tipping the scales at nearly like 140 pages, with 45 pages of ads, 39 of them being devoted to exact video game titles. You know, the things the entire latter half of the magazine is devoted to objectively reviewing? That's around one third of the pages in the magazine I'm holding. Colbert. Sarkeesian. Gaming's just as corrupt as the fourth estate fuckwads in any other phylum of entertainment? My China white asshole! I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed!